Welcome to Park City Boot. This is our store. Nice. And, nice. and uh, unfortunately, right now the mall's closed, so we have been shopping online only uh, with pickup at the curbside, I guess. Curbside yeah. pickup. So. Yeah, different times. Are you guys right in, gosh, I, I'm going blank, the big mall? What's it called yeah, again? Yeah, uh, Sherway Garden. So it's in the West End. It's, oh, um, gotcha. It's um, like not near the airport or anything, but it's 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 a pretty notable mall. It's a very nice mall. Sherway Gardens, like a Tobacco, I guess. Gotcha, gotcha. So a little bit outside the city. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, we uh, we were thinking of you and how uh, unfortunately Serge Ibaka has gone. There's a you know an opening to be the most fashionable rafter. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, so we can guide you through that process with our footwear. <laughs> hey, I need I need all the help that I can get. So I would appreciate that. Cool, cool. So we uh, I know we'll talk about basketball in a minute, but we want to talk about some styles that you already previewed online and picked. And yeah. um, we're pretty familiar with your style here at Park. And uh, I know uh, you love to. I see you in a lot of like joggers and denim, but also when you're suiting up, like loved your the Glen Check pant you wore last Christmas Day. Yeah. Some more of the, the suity looks. So um, the Victoria boot, which I know you picked out online. Yeah, that's the one I'm. I'm. I really like. I'm leaning towards that one. Awesome, and it's got the zipper, which is yeah. really nice for like easy it's, to wear. For sure, for sure, and it's unique as well, right? Thank you. Yeah. So all of our footwear is made in Portugal. We also do a carnauba wax on all of them. So they are water resistant. We also add a lot of practical features like grid soles. So you won't be slipping and sliding. That's huge. That's huge. And I, I mean, you're in Tampa as opposed to yeah. Toronto. You don't have to worry about the elements this year. Which Well, true, but we will be, uh, we'll still travel for games and stuff. So we'll be up in the Northeast, New York and Philly, Boston, it'll be some cold areas. We wish we could be in Toronto, obviously, but again, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get to basketball here in a sec. Sounds good, sounds good. Um, my, we have it in blue as well. This is my brother, Jonas, he, he works with us too. How's it going, man? Nice, I love the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, oh, you, guys both, you guys both have it going, perfect. My brother's actually wearing the Victoria boot. I don't know if you can, his are pretty beat up, but I mean like it's cool cause you can wear it casual, but you can also shine it up and wear it with a nice suit. Like I right. saw so you have a blue suit, really beautiful. So we also have it in the navy blue with the contrast laces. Cool. And um, again, the zipper, red sole, really high quality boot. Perfect, perfect. Um, the other shirt I want to talk to you about, which you also picked out was our Selkirk. So this has been one of our best sellers each winter. Um, it's got a great um, chevron grip there. So really good traction for when you get into those winter areas. And then it is synthetic line, so it's super warm, but it's a cool sneaker, great with joggers, with dark denim, like casual dress up. You can really get away with a lot of options. You can see the right. pebble there. Mm -hmm. there. Yeah, kind super. Yeah, that's what I liked about it. Super casual, and like you said, it's uh. It's and we have it. Oh yeah. The and then navy. Oh, and blue also. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there? Do you do black or like do you like color or? Uh, I mean, blue. Blue would be a little bit out of the comfort zone, but hey, really? I mean, it, <laughs> it's always good to do that. But uh, I'm leaning towards. I like the brown Victoria. I think the best. The brown, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, the brown Selkirk is also great. But yeah, blacks and brown. I'm, I keep things simple for the most part, and you can Sounds just, you can just wear it with more stuff, right? Exactly, exactly. Like con this, the cognac brown is so nice. It's really versatile. Um, like charcoal gray, navy. Um, you can even do some black and some dark colors with it. It's a really versatile color. Yeah, right. Right. And with even like just blue jeans or blue pants uh, the, off the blue because the blue laces. Right. For sure. For I'm sure. With, like, pants right now. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. can see them all of it. It's cool. Versatile. Versatile um, shoe. I was going to show you too, like this, the, besides the winter sneaker, we do the same sneaker and we do it um, a summer <laughs> version of it. So it has no liner. This is called the Gabe uh. sneaker. And it's got that zipper, which is really nice as well. Um, okay. And again, good traction, but a nice lighter weight option for for, um, sure. for traveling. And then we have it in some other cool colors, like the winter white is actually really popular for us too. Yeah, that's <laughs> the white white shoes always uh, always clean look. For sure. I wanted to ask you a question about um, like maybe I guess your most formidable like fashion. Experience 
experience coming up would be like high school in Wisconsin and then Iowa State, Spain, Toronto, and now Tampa. How is like, yeah. your fashion? How does it change with each of these life situations? Uh, that's funny. Um, well, high school, I was just wearing like oversized sweatpants and hoodies pretty <laughs> much every day. Um, yeah. I went to like a public school, so it was like no dress code or anything like that. Awesome. Um, so just dressing casual and that's when like the oversized sweats was like in so totally uh, it's funny looking back at some of those pictures even in the in the Iowa State I was there from 2013 to 17 um that's when it started to like change into like joggers towards mm -hmm. like my junior senior year that was kind of the cool thing okay but right away again like basketball player wearing a bunch of like baggy stuff like yeah. we'll try to try to dress up like I kind of thought I was a, you know in a frat at the same time so I'm wearing like <laughs> like all the uh got like patagonia and oh, yeah, some yeah. of those brands like pretty much like all the all the frat kids are wearing that that, that kind of stuff um it's hard for your like your height as well to get like a like a tailored suit or things like that that fit better right like for sure for sure yeah well and at that point too like i wasn't really i didn't really need to wear like nice clothes very often or like need to dress up we didn't really have yeah. any events or occasions where now mm -hmm. um, more of like in the professional world obviously you can dress up nice you know it's your option to dress up if you want to like a game for example or sure. but there's so many more like events and things that you could do as you obviously age um that yeah. you need to you know, look presentable <laughs> yeah yeah well not right now exactly uh, but then, yeah, uh, in Spain it was a little different too. Uh, a little culture shock. Uh, started wearing, you know, at least tried tried some new things. Didn't really okay. stick stick well. But everyone's wearing the skinny jeans over there. Yeah, um, I, I can wear the slim pants like that. Yeah. That's my body yeah. type. But the skinny skinny jeans is a little a little excessive. Um, it's, a, it's a tough look. Yeah, it's not too comfortable. But um, yeah, no. And then as I like, like I said, as I've got older, just tried to evolve a little bit i still like i said again have a lot of room to grow uh, i'm a pretty simple guy uh but yeah it's nice to you know wear something nice here and there for sure for sure like uh um i guess like the what's it called the photos in the tunnel like it's become such a like important part of basketball culture right now right like yeah 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 getting that no, it's look huge. it's a <laughs> huge thing yeah for sure that's what we try to do with Park, just really add some like more colors, more designs for the men's shoes, you know, like just trying to give more fashion to the to the whole that side of men's wear. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, no, and that's what yeah, that's what I had told Sam, like just I had jumped on your guys' website. Uh and it just you guys have a lot of great products. Thank you. We also do like the practical features, like our slogans, like for gents on the go. So we want people from the boardroom to the boardwalk, you know, like right, you want yeah. to be able to uh, you know, if you're taking public transit or going to dinner or at your desk, you can wear a boot that looks nice, but you're not going to slip on your butt and fall. <laughs> yeah, it, no, exactly. Exactly. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. So one more shoe I want to show you kind of um, with our, our Raptor uh, customers. It's really popular. It's called the Pier Shoe. And I was thinking if you're in Tampa, this is like such a great shoe. Um, it's a slip on. It's got a neoprene back, so it wicks away sweat, so it won't make, won't make your foot stinky and hot. And it's got a collapsible heel back, so it's a really easy shoe for getting on the airplane, traveling. This is like, you stuff it in your bag. It's also yeah. really lightweight, and we do it in a variety of leathers. So you can see, like, um, nice. you can even with a pair of chinos, like, cropped, wear them to, like, a, like a summer wedding or something. But obviously, with, like, sneakers and a more casual one it's a really great one for for all your wear but in yeah. tampa i think this oh, would be perfect a yeah it's perfect for Tam <laughs> yeah like you said perfect for tampa uh wear it to the beach or hopefully have access get on a boat or something get out on the water you uh, have to, you, you to do that yeah you have to have a shoe like that um we talked a little bit about bags too you like leather bags <laughs> yeah i know a couple of your guys' bags are really nice i like the uh the weekender bag Yes, perfect. So all of our bags are actually made here in Toronto, which is a little bit different compared to a lot of leather brands. That's really so, cool. Um, yeah, handmade in here uh, in Toronto, full grain Italian leather. Um, this is like an amazing overnighter bag, week weekender bag. Um, right. We do armored pocket on the bottom as well. So 
Um, you can put your laptop in there so you don't have to like dig through your underwear to like get out your laptop yeah. or, whatever yeah. so, uh, or whatever you put in there and yeah. um, a synthetic lining so it wicks away um, any spills like a really great size bag oh. and we do it in a variety of colors so it's a really nice uh, handsome what is, what is the uh i think you had like an all black one do you have one of those with you yeah, right now, there, yeah. yeah. So, okay, you like, that like pebble pebble yeah i like the pebble yeah yeah, yeah. So that's like the, that. the one in the pebble. And um, again, same thing with the armored pocket. We do do as well, the toiletry bags as well. Um, okay. Sorry, the store is like a bit of a, yeah. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> so oh, the cool. toiletry bag is a great, um, you know. So those, it's a pretty big, pretty good size too, right? Like you can fit yeah. a lot in there. Yeah. And we don't do, um, there's no pockets inside. So it's nice that you can just put things in, like, you know, as opposed to those ones with the little compartments, it's really like a, yeah. a men's toiletry bag. Yeah, that's better for, <laughs> yeah, for, a, for a guy. Cause I mean, I've had ones with pockets and you don't even, you just forget what's where. <laughs> Totally, totally or you just don't or you just don't use them so it's it's better just to have more space with no pockets right perfect perfect well um i guess we should talk about some basketball we're happy to see you how's tampa <laughs> it's good um obviously it's it's different year like we talked about all of us you know the team coach and staff everyone front office we all wish you know we were up in toronto uh with our fans and fan base but you know unprecedented times right now we're just thankful to be able to play and um you know everyone's healthy and we're ready for ready for a successful season for sure for us at home it's so exciting that there's going to be basketball on tv i yeah. guess <laughs> yeah no exactly something to watch something to look forward to um for us it's like just some normalcy like during this pandemic you know with every it, you know everything is obviously not normal or far from normal so mm -hmm. basketball kind of gives us that for sure. I, that was going to be one of my questions was like mental strength, like your NBA rookie year last year, like you fractured your finger, then there was COVID and then there was like the bubble and now yeah. like Trump in Tampa. How do you stay strong? Like, how do you keep it together? Like family or what? how do you? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, for me, I just think it was kind of how I was raised, just everything I've been through growing up, um, just from a, you know, from life standpoint and just through basketball. Um, kind of my career and my path that I've taken has given me a lot of perspective. And basically just going back onto what I just said, um, everything going on right now, you know, it's, you have to be, keep things in perspective because so many people, um, you know, are getting sick uh, or mm -hmm. they're losing their jobs or like, it, there's some very, very terrible things going on in the world right now. And personally, I'm just thankful that, you know, myself and my loved ones are, healthy and happy and I'm doing what I love every day. So I have nothing to complain that's about. That's great. We wanted to talk about Mr. 99 as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that Sorry. was never that was never like a name. I definitely never came up with that. And a lot of well, people actually, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people actually don't know the the true story behind it. So like okay. basically uh there was like a like synergy is like a basketball statistical website that that comes out with stats and I, they had like tweeted when i was after i'd signed with the raptors they like tweeted out a stat um of my shooting percentages in europe and i had an effective field goal percentage of 99 percent on open threes and an effective field goal percentage is different than field goal percentage right so like I think a lot of people read that and like, oh, field goal percentage, he shoots 99% if he's unguarded. <laughs> That's literally impossible. Like nobody, <laughs> nobody could do it. Uh, but effective field goal percentage, I'll try to make this simple, but it's kind of com complex. Uh, essentially, some, for someone to like shoot two pointers, um, since obviously a three pointers were three points, two pointers were two points, someone would have to shoot two pointers at a 99%. Um, like field goal percentage to make the same amount of value as me on my open threes if that makes sense but okay, yeah anyways people ran with the whole 99 thing um i'm cool with it um so i mean at the end of the day i take it as a, as a compliment well we enjoy seeing you make those threes that's for sure <laughs> yeah um you know that's that's why i'm here so uh that's that's something you know obviously that i've worked on my shot and my craft that that's something i've done my entire life and um just that's that's been fun too to continue to progress and there's always room to improve so 
just always trying to trying to get better at that every day uh so yeah like i'm a big fan you know like i played uh very amateurish but i played we played on the same team this year i play basketball (laughs) oh nice like a like a rec rec league or something yeah yeah. my brother would never pass to me though (laughs) 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 but uh yeah so like a big fan of the way you played and uh just like who were your idols or like who did you look up to when you were growing up like what what who did you model your game after like what what exactly for sure yes so i started uh i was born in 94 um so i'm 26 so i i started watching basketball when i was like seven six seven and that was like early 2000s when the lakers were kind of those dynasty years with kobe and shaq and they had won three championships in a row and i i kind of just jumped on that bandwagon honestly uh, but I grew up a huge Kobe Bryant fan, um, loved him, loved the, the, the Lakers. Wow. Once, once I realized I wasn't going to be uh, an same level athlete and, you know, <laughs> six, 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 seven as, as Kobe, I started watching guys that I could kind of relate to a little bit more. Um, some guys I really liked watching as a kid were Richard Hamilton. Um, he was with the Pistons, just how he played off the ball, how he played, um, used, used screens off the ball. And obviously he was a, a great shooter. Uh, JJ Redick is another one. And then another guy I really loved watching, uh, his fellow Canadian. I'm sure you guys will like this answer is Steve Nash. Yeah. Yeah. So, that was Steve Nash, right? That was my guy. Yeah. yeah. It was tough because because Phoenix and the Lakers always would play each other in the playoffs. And I was I was kind of kind of uh torn. Uh, but I, I always cheered for the Lakers. But those are um three guys that I that I always enjoyed watching as a kid. Did you um, have any Kobe experiences? I didn't. Unfortunately, I, I was mm-hmm. never uh, never able to meet him. That was kind of like a bucket list thing. I guess but that's part of the your your strength as well, like the things that went wrong in twenty twenty, right? Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, just the impact that he's had on on me. Um, he's like impacted and inspired me to, you know, have have the mindset that I do and just the passion and and love that I have for the game. Um, I give a lot of credit to him and I know that I, I speak for a, a lot of guys that are currently in the NBA and kind of my generation that grew up idolizing him. You know, his impact goes goes uh, far beyond basketball. Um, and I'm just I'm thankful to have someone like him to kind of look up to or had someone like him to look up to growing up. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's another level. It's another level. Um, we had a, a question from a friend asking what um, what basketball shoe will you be using this year, or what ba- what's your go to basketball yeah. shoe besides Park City boot, obviously. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I don't know. I we don't, don't know. have many basketball shoes yet. Yeah, you guys are really versatile, but I don't know if yeah. I, could, I could sprint from yeah. the corner to the top of the key and hit a three in those uh, Victoria boots. But um, it's actually a good question. I'm kind of trying to find a shoe that I I like this year. You know. The, Nike always comes out with new models every single year. Um, so you kind of have to find which shoe you like. Um, right now, I'm, I've been playing in a Kobe model that, that was actually it's called the Kobe AD. It was, uh, I think they first first released it like two or three years ago. And it's just a shoe that I, I really love. And um, it's tough because they stopped making it. So I've, I've had to get some extra pairs finding them online um so i'm trying to find anyways i'm trying to find another pair that that will work but i always kind of resort back to the uh the kobe's um maybe that's because i you know grew up a kobe fan or it's also the most comfortable shoe for me you know my foot and how i play perfect so we are just going to ask if anybody wants to ask uh, matt a question there's been a couple going up and i i haven't really haven't really read some of them i don't know do you have any more questions yeah, like I said, this is mean? this is my first one. So how does it? Yeah. I guess there's people commenting and stuff right yeah, now. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, uh, what are you gonna miss about Toronto besides the cold weather? <laughs> yeah, well, I grew up in Wisconsin, so the cold weather doesn't doesn't phase me. Um, but it is. I can't lie. That is one potential positive. Like it doesn't phase me, but I I do like the uh the warm weather down here and the sunshine. I I uh, mm-hmm. can't complain about that. 
Uh, the obvious answer is is obviously the f- the fan base up in Toronto. Just being around our fan base, um, we're such a strong fan base. You will feel us in Tampa. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. There's probably a lot of snowbirds, Canadian oh, snowbirds yeah. down here. So, hopefully, I'm not sure what the rules and restrictions are yet on on fans attending games. I'm sure oh. they'll make sure you know everyone's safe. But hopefully, we can have have a certain capacity at games. Uh, have some um, Toronto fans down here cheering I- us on. Someone asked, who's the toughest person you've had to guard? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, in college, so I went to Iowa State in the Big 12. Uh, a tough matchup for me I was always Buddy Heald. Uh, he played at Oklahoma, and I, th- I can't remember. He might have been, you know, uh, player of the year in college, but obviously an incredible scorer, incredible shooter. You know, he's having a success- successful NBA career so far with Sacramento. Um, this past season... You know, in the NBA, a lot of times you, you switch on defense and there was times where I was matched up on Giannis or LeBron for a possession where you just try to kind of, <laughs> yeah, just try to hold your own in those situations. <laughs> but um, obviously those guys are incredible players. Um, and then we have another question. Um, so you got signed to the championship team. How was that? Like was Toronto on your, I mean, being in Wisconsin, like Toronto's probably been on your radar, but uh, how, how was what kind of experience is that coming to Canada and playing for our team? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, it's funny, it kind of came full circle for me. Uh, when I came out of Iowa State, I did a pre-draft workout with the Raptors, and I was actually supposed to play with the Raptors in summer league um, coming out of college in 2017. Oh, kind of yeah. kind of made a last-minute switch to play with the Lakers. Um, we ended up winning that summer league, and I had an opportunity to stay and kind of play in the G League with the Lakers or or – you know, start my career in Spain. And I elected to kind of go to Spain, not only just, I thought it was a better basketball fit, but also just kind of for a life experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up in Wisconsin, like I, like I've been saying, and I went to school at Iowa state had never really left the Midwest and um, leaving uh, the country was a good opportunity to kind of spread my wings and get out of my comfort zone and and grow as a, as a player and a person kind of on my own. Uh, but anyways, yeah, the Raptors was always a team that kind of like through my agent um, was always telling me that they were interested in watching me and keeping keeping an eye on me. And it just made sense a uh, couple summers or two summers ago uh, to kind of make the move from Europe to the NBA. And I couldn't have asked for a better situation, a uh, better organization to come to uh, with my first team, the NBA. Um, one thing I was impressed by, like the first, you know, first first day I walked in the door and got around the guys was um just first off just how great you know of an organization they are um how professional it is but also just how motivated and hungry everybody was they were fresh off a championship less than like a few weeks ago when i when i was around everyone and everyone was motivated um to try to do it again um the the following season and uh, i just think that speaks a lot about um just the organization as an as a whole absolutely there's a lot of people asking about the three-point uh, contests. <laughs> they oh, want to see you there. They, they I know. They should be there. So we're, we're hoping that you're... I hope so, too. Uh, disappointing news, though. I'm not positive on this, but I don't know if there's going to be an all-star game and, and all-star uh, events this year because it's a very condensed... It's uh, a strange year, yeah. Yeah, it's a condensed all-star break. Uh, I think it's only like four days. So I don't think, as far as I know, I don't think they're doing those contests this season. But uh, hopefully one day I'll be able to participate in that. I would love that. It sounds about right. And then I'll ask you one more question. Did someone asked, so what's your game day meal? <laughs> game day meal uh, kind of fluctuates, uh, but I eat a lot. I, eat, I have a very good metabolism and I burn a lot of calories and obviously yeah. work out a lot. So I can eat a lot. Uh, I love breakfast food. So... Um, one thing I do, uh, not every game day, but a lot of days, uh, and I encourage people to try this. I get a lot of weird looks when I do this, but I put peanut butter on my pancakes. I put, I put peanut butter on my pancakes. You also put syrup. It's sweet, salty mix. It's incredible. Yeah. So people Extra need it. Protein. Exactly. People need to Is try it that. Like the real peanut butter or like, like the the, the like the smooth craft peanut butter like or is it like the organic like chunky peanut butter uh just simple yeah like jiff or craft whatever yeah whatever um yeah, sim- simple peanut butter <laughs> yeah uh then yeah usually like eggs and some type of omelet i'll go with and um i also love like granola yogurt granola oatmeal granola something like that 
and then you know you could have some pasta or or something something a little lighter before the game um but yeah no that's usually my go-to sorry wait, one more question how about aaron bain what is he going to bring to the team are you excited we're all excited what do you yeah uh, yeah i think i think we're all excited obviously you know we're we're sad and we're going to miss you know mark and serge but you mark know and serge, yeah. right we're excited you know to have aaron here and um you know he's obviously extremely you know tough big man um yeah. personally i'm excited to have him set some screens for me and and fly off some screens because i know that that's one thing he's in he's great at um actually today in practice i was the uh culprit of that i, I got hit pretty hard by one of his screens yeah so um I'm, I'm looking forward to being on the other side of that and having him as a teammate versus uh competing against him in practice that sounds about right <laughs> Well, we wanted to thank you so much for making time for us. And uh, we uh, can't wait to send a nice little care package down to you in Tampa. All the best Saturdays, the first uh, pregame, right? Yeah, preseason game pre this Saturday. Game. So, yeah, we'll, we'll head to Charlotte tomorrow. And, um, yeah, we're, we're just a, a week or so away from, from uh, the, the official season getting underway. Yeah, so stay safe. And uh, we miss you guys here in Toronto. And um, we look forward to seeing you again, Matt, okay? Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks a Have lot. A stay safe up there. Yes. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.